What's up guys, it's Brian from Cross Coast Gaming with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we uh, added our enemy class and we drew him here. He's uh, seen better days, not very well blended with the background, and uh, I said last time we're going to fix that and it's not very difficult. Um, we're going to go to the artist class instead of our helpers. And here, instead of our begin session method, where we kind of initialize all of the open GL calls for what we're going to be doing, uh, right below where we enable 2D textures, we're also going to enable gl, oops, gl underscore blend. And this will allow us to blend with the background on the alpha channel, which is the transparency of an image. And after that, we need to call a function. So gl blend func for function. And it takes two arguments. And these aren't very intuitive. And uh, they're kind of antiquated. They're not very uh, easy to understand here. GLSRC alpha is the first argument here. And the second one is GL1 minus SRC alpha. All right. So we enable blending and then we set the settings for our alpha channel and how we're going to blend that. So, you know, previously it was just black and white and there was no kind of transparency going on. And that should fix that. So let's try and run that now. Sweet. Looks better. I'm still not so sure about the uh, texture I made for it, but it definitely looks a lot better than it did before. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start our clock class. And this is perhaps not very exciting, but very, very important for a lot of the stuff in our game. Because obviously a lot of the stuff relies on time as far as, you know, enemies moving, bullets moving, times between waves. All of that is going to be relying on our clock class that we make. Um, there are some default already built in uh, timing measures, but I feel like it's better to make our own because we can expand on it and uh, make methods to pause the game or increase the speed, decrease the speed, etc. So we're going to do it in our helpers class. It's going to be our second helper here. Go ahead and name it clock. And we're going to make some variables at the top. And remember to make them static, because just like our artist, we want them to be accessible from our other classes. And the first one's going to be paused. And we're not going to build our pause feature right at the beginning, but at some point, I feel like we're going to add it. So might as well just get that out of the way. Next is going to be our long, which is just a really long integer. And we need one for last frame and one for total time. And these variables, I'm kind of making ahead of time, but it'll make sense as we fill out the class, hopefully. And finally, public static float D, short for delta time, which I'll get to in a second, and multiplier, which is another thing we're not going to add quite yet, but that'll be able to kind of slow down the speed of the enemies, you know, speed them up, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty cool uh, once we implement it. And so those are all of our variables we need, and we're going to start putting a couple methods in here, and we're not going to do all of them in this video, but public static long, so it's going to return a long number, get time. And this is going to call on some methods from the actual system. So sys dot get time, and it returns in milliseconds, so we're going to multiply it by a thousand here, divided by sys dot get time resolution timer resolution, excuse me. Okay. The next method we're going to make is a public static, oops, public static float get delta. And this is what we're going to be calling on all the time for our uh, moving entities and our moving enemies and towers and all that. Uh, the delta time, as is used in maybe if you've uh, used Unity 3D before or other programming platforms, and also just in general, the delta time would be the time between right now and the last update to the game. And so we can kind of, it's used in big games like AAA titles to kind of compensate for lag too, to make sure that even if someone isn't getting all the data, they're at least moving at the same speed. Um, but for us, we're using it just to move our textures around. So get delta, and we're going to put in long current time equals get time which is the method we just made up here. And we're going to declare an int for delta equals 
And we're going to cast this one as an integer here because it is not a default. Current time minus last frame, which is that variable we declared up here but haven't set yet. And finally, last frame equals get time. Okay? And then here, so it stops giving us an error. We'll fill this out real quick. 0.01f. So what we're doing is every time this updates, okay, we're setting the current delta time between now and the last frame, and then we're setting last frame equal to right now. So the next time we call it, it'll be calling it between, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> next time we call it, last frame will be equal to right now. So in the future, it'll equal the delta time between now and the next update. Um, it's a little confusing, which I totally get. But luckily, we're not going to be editing the clock class a lot after we build it. It's more just kind of accessing these methods that we're making. So it's okay if you don't understand it like 100%. Um, next, public static float delta. And this one is just kind of for our pause method. Um, we're going to say if paused, which is the Boolean we made up at the top, then return 0 because there are no updates going on, so there's no delta. Else, return d, which is our shorthand float we made up here, multiplied by the multiplier for the speed. And stuff like this, again, is going to make more sense after we're actually calling it from inside of our game and making use of it. All right. Next is our public my gosh, public static float total time. And this is our getter. Instead of get total time, we're just going to call it total time because it's static, so we're going to be accessing it that way. And we're just going to return total time. And we're going to do the same thing for our multiplier, public static float multiplier return multiplier. And lastly, uh, for this video, we're going to implement the update method, which we're going to call every time the game goes through an update cycle. So public static void update. Oops, update. And inside here, D, which is our temporary holder for delta up here, is equal to get delta. So we're setting it that way. And then total time plus equals D. And so plus equals is just the same thing as saying equals total time plus D. We're just adding D to total time. So total time plus equals D. All right. So it's not very intuitive. It's kind of confusing, you know. And we're just going to get out of the way. I was kind of putting it off for a while. I decided to draw the enemy first so you can see how it's going to be useful in moving our texture around. But we're almost done building it, and we're probably just going to add a couple more methods in here. And then all we need to do is just call those methods from our game. So it's kind of like the artist class. You know how this stuff is pretty confusing, but when we're actually just calling it, it's not that confusing anymore. So luckily we got our guy looking good here and hopefully we can get them moving around pretty soon. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.